say. And it's really, really foolish when a dude says it. Well, you know, you got to let a man. No, she does not have to let a man be a man. That is his prerogative. That is his what he needs to do. That is his wheelhouse. Has not a damn thing to do with her. I've always wanted to do this. This is what I call hustler mindset philosophy. Some things that I've talked about with close friends and I'm gonna share with you. Today's topic is a good one. Letting him be a man. You hear this in our society all of the time. Girl, just let him be a man. Just let him be a man. That statement is replete with arrogance and insensitivity and downright fuckery. You letting me be a man is like me letting you have a vagina. It's like letting me you have you have breast. It's really not up to me. It has nothing to do with me. Now the reason I'm having this talk, if you didn't know, I'm a unicorn. I come from a land far, far away. I remember the first time that I challenged that assertion. Probably 1997, I was at work. And the women in the break room, because I used to work in the milk field, which is the estrogen zone. And it was just like, well, girls, just let him be a man. And I said, him being a man has nothing to do with her. And they just kind of sucked their lips, sucked their teeth, and rolled their eyes at me. How dare I have the audacity to even begin to challenge such foolishness. I call it the African DNA syndrome, but more on that later. And it just went on and went on and they marginalized my comments, but I've noticed it is still something that many women say. And it's really, really foolish when a dude says it. Well, you know, you got to let a man. No, she does not have to let a man be a man. That is his prerogative. That is his what he needs to do. That is his wheelhouse. Has not a damn thing to do with her. And the sooner you realize that, the much easier your life is going to get because you will go through this rough patch of throwing out the garbage and getting rid of the bullshit, cleaning your mind out. Because this is what happens. When you fall prey to that mindset, you give up your power. You give up your agency. Let me give you an example. I had a friend. And he was having marital problems. He was going through some stuff. Some things were happening. And he got really frustrated when I was over there. And he's like, you know, you just got to let me be the man of the house. And at that point, I said, good evening. I'm getting the fuck on. Later on, she ends up throwing him out. Literally throwing him out two, three weeks later because he calls me up. He needed a place to stay. I said, hey, you can stay with me. And he had also had asked his sister and some of the people. And his sister said, cool. So that was closer to his job. And I just thought about that. In the middle of a demand, he gave her an option to let him be a man. Now, let's just reverse that. Let's just take it all the way back. What if he had said, I am the man and you need to deal with it. I'm going to protect this house. I'm going to make sure that we're safe. I'm going to do what I need to do to make sure that we're good as a family. I guarantee you, he would have got a different response. Because when she heard, she heard a child. No woman respects an adult child. You might be 30 years old. You might be 40 years old. Shit, you might be 75. But if you behave like a child, you will be treated like a child, regardless of your chronological age. And that's what he did. He had a temper tantrum. So this is the danger of falling prey to that mindset of letting him be a man. 
Now I've got some advice for you. Next time you hear anyone, male or female, if it's a male, you might just say, bruh, let me talk to you in the hall for a second and educate him because words have amazing power. Propaganda, amazing power. So when you start repeating the dogma, the propaganda of people who want to control you, they already have controlled you because you're using their language to define yourself. Think about that. You are using your langu their language to define you, which is one of the reasons I don't use nigger, nigga, nick. I don't use none of that stuff because that is not a word that black people came up with. And every time I hear the argument of, well, you know, we, we gave it a positive spin. No, the fuck you didn't. No, the fuck you didn't. Because typically when it's used, it's not used in a positive way. It usually has some silly, slick way or some fucked up connotation. So tell me how it's that powerful. I did a video. I don't know if it's still up, but a rapper a few years ago used the word in a tweet and people lost their minds. Then Gwen Palaf, I believe, used it to describe the song between Kanye and Jay-Z and people lost their mind. Once again, language does not have a fence. You have to put up a fence to keep that shit out of your brain. But many people just keep going ahead and using the language of their oppressor, using the language of their enemy and wonder why they're losing. If you are going to you have lost the minute that you opened up your mouth because you, yeah, you, you don't believe that you're a man. You don't believe that you have the power to be a man without the approval of pussy. That's what it's all about. Men do 70 to 90% of what they do in life for the approval of pussy. Now, how can you smash something that doesn't respect you? Think about that. Think about that. Because where we are as a society is a very strange place. Many men are opting out. They're going to MGTOW. They're joining the men's rights movements. Or they're just saying, fuck it. I'm just going to fuck, play Sony PlayStation and smoke weed all day. Because if I work hard and if I engage in a marriage and I build assets, if she's unhappy, she can leave and just take my money. And there's not a lot I can do with it. That is the thought process, but that's not entirely true. There's a lot you can do with it, which goes to the heart of what I'm discussing in this video. When you claim your agency of being a man, and you start to project and to build and to plot and to plan your life before pussy comes on the scene, you have a better way of handling pussy. Give you an example. I'll use me. If I meet a woman and she does not have certain criteria that was already thought out, I've got a list and it has nothing to do with looks. There's like 10 things on this list that have nothing to do with looks. And if any one of those 10 things is missing, she's just going to be pussy in my life. That's it. We cannot go any further. We can't build. We can't do. No, she's not going to get any better because if she's going to get any better, she's going to get better on her own accord. What many of you are doing are wifing up sluts and wondering why they're fucking around on you. You're wifing up bad people and hoping they'll change. You're passing over good women because they weren't hot enough. You are the agent of your self destruction because whether you plan a life or you don't plan a life, it's a choice. Once you start to put together your philosophy, when you put together your agency, when you start, when you hear that term, let the man be a man. You immediately, immediately become irritated. You're well on your way to being the man that you should be and could be. Because if you keep following that, just let her have her way. Following the she said doctrine, slowly but surely, you're gonna give up every essence, every corner, every aspect of your masculinity.
And then you're going to wonder why they don't respect you. I've said it in the comments. I've put out many. You, if a woman likes you, you don't have to take her out for her to fuck you. I am serious about this, but there's so many. Well, you know, I'm going to be a good guy. No, you want to be fucking liked. You have put your pride on the table. You have taken your nuts out of your pants, put them on the table and said, please squash them. Because I care more about you liking me than I care about you respecting me. It's a hard lesson to swallow. I used to be where you were. I used to do the same shit and was wondering, like, why isn't this working out? Now, I know I was fed a false narrative of how relationships should be, not how they actually are. And when I created my philosophy, when I created my criteria, my dating life got fantastic. I have something called the 99% rule. 99% of the people that you encounter are not the one. But many of you, when you meet that person, or you go on one or two bad dates, oh fuck, I'm not gonna date no more. Fuck it, man. Where all the good girls are gone, all the good guys are gone. No, that's how it's supposed to be. You're just a weak little bitch that can't deal with adversity. That's the problem. That's how the world is. Most of them, male, female, are not the one. Maybe someone you'll have a pleasant lunch with. Maybe someone you'll fuck for two or three years. But when you meet that person that you can build a life, it will not be about pussy. It will not be about dick. It will not be about sex. It'll be about enjoyment. It'll be about having a good time. It'll be about the future and legacy. But if all you're thinking, and I see it on Facebook all the time, 50-year-old mama's trying to be hot up in the club because she didn't get that when she was 18, Little nerdy dude that did well, all of a sudden he's buying all the pussy his wallet, his gold card or his platinum card can afford and thinking he the man. Once you understand the dynamics of humans, once you understand how you're be you are, understand your behavior, understand the behaviors of others will be easy. As long as you keep lying to yourself like I'm good, I'm all right. I'm good, I'm all right. This is fine. Yet you are smoking yourself into oblivion you get drunk at every chance you have you're you're miserable you may look good but you don't feel good and honestly i think feeling good is way better than looking good so think about that are you going to let someone take over your agency are you going to let someone say you're a man or you're not a man or are you just going to rear up on your hind legs and say yes i'm a man and you have nothing to fucking do with it nothing that's my business. And if you don't like my business, get out of my life. You have to be that direct, that sure, and on point. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you adopt this attitude, and there's a lot of women who watch this channel going to see it, who going to hate this message. And there's a lot of them that are going to get fucking wet. Because it's like, ooh, that motherfucker could put me in my place. And when I say putting someone in their place, it doesn't mean putting your hands on them. It means there's so much respect for you as a man that you say, babe, do this and she's doing it. It's automatic. There are no arguments. There's no pushback because there's a high level of respect. I call it LTR, love, trust, and respect. And all the, level, all the letters are the same size. If you are missing one of those, your relationship is fucked. You can love somebody, but if you don't respect them, it's no good. You can love somebody, you can respect them, but you don't trust them. It's no good. So you got to have love, trust, and respect. And that's part of the agency of being a man and thinking about these things. Because if you can't lead you, how the fuck can you lead her? And I see all of this stuff about men need to be leaders. Men, you, If you are not leading you, if you're not working on your life, if you're not building your life, if you're not putting together your shit, how in the hell do you expect her to follow you? And once again, if she's not doing what she needs to do, why the fuck do you want her? Understand, we get ourselves in trouble. I'll raise my hand. Oh, I fucked up. I'm no longer a card carrying member of the Big Booty Appreciation Fan Club. Oh, man, I paid my dues every year. Had the card. We'd go to all the conclaves. Oh, phew, I was there. Then I realized when I connected the dots that I placed more of a premium on a big ass than a big character and I was all kinds of fucked up situations and when I stopped doing that the fucked up situation stopped 
amazing, isn't it? For those of you who are liking this and want a little more, I'm going to make you a deal because some, <laughs> some serious stuff's about to happen with disruptive mating. I'm about to add a child support uh, family court section, probably going to morph into something I call Legal Mondays because part of being a man is controlling your life, controlling your freedom, and controlling your money. If you fall prey to that system, you may not be able to control any of that. So for those of you who have made it to the end of the video, be sure to go ahead and get, get in now for disruptive mating because I'm going to grow that in several different categories. And if you get in now, you'll save big. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you in the next session.